Hey guys, so in the garage and uh, I'm going on a trip uh, on 29th uh, in two days. But first I need to get the discovery fixed. Uh, I got a, a air suspension fault and I got a leak in my air reservoir. So the air tank is not holding its air anymore. So I need to get that fixed. So tonight I'm just going to raise the car, set it in build mode and air vent uh, and vent out the air reservoir so it's ready for tomorrow and also put on some uh, some rust remover or dissolver so uh, that uh, tomorrow morning when I'm going to start removing tank it's going to be easy hopefully so yeah just raise it up so the fault that I'm getting is uh, it's not ra uh, the pressure in the air tank isn't racing uh, uh, fast enough and that will give, give a logical error uh, that will show up in your display as a yellow uh, warning light for the air suspension uh, and it also will say uh, normal height only so uh, yeah uh, so let's race the car So I'm gonna raise it all the way up to the top and this is gonna take a while since the air tank isn't filling up as fast as it should. Um, so I'm going into uh, to off-road mode. So I'm just rolling back and forth so the, the suspension can level itself out or else the camber is gonna work against the air struts. So when your tank isn't working as it should, you also can get um, notification that the uh, air, uh, air suspension isn't rising fast enough or it's rising slowly it would say in the display so that's that's also uh, intention that the, maybe the air tank or the compressor is, is broken but then my compressor is new it's the AMK one so I already replaced that last year so uh, it's time for the tank The car is in the off-road mode. Now we can set it into uh, to build mode and then vent out uh, the air reservoir. But if I uh, turn out off the car now, it's gonna you're gonna gonna hear the the air running out of the the, the air tank. So I don't have to actually vent out the reservoir. But I'm gonna do it uh, just so we can I can show you how it's done on the ID2. So I got the ID2, uh, the Bluetooth version, which uh, is really great. Let's just plug it in. And then you can use your phone to uh, to access the tool. So recording, so we can search for the tool. Load and you can see all the faults. Continue. And you can go into service and test. Uh, then you get up. Uh, the thing you can uh, do and you can go into uh, RLM suspension and there you have a uh, build mode yes activating build mode will say that it will stay in the same position no matter what so the the valve blocks won't work and start uh, start airing down any of the corner if it's crooked or anything like that it's the same thing if you if you Raise the uh, raise the the car and then uh, take out the air suspension um, uh, fuse. I think it's number twenty six. I think so. If you remove that fuse, a twenty amp fuse, uh, it's not gonna not going to lower. That, that's also a way you can check if the you have a leak in some of the corners of your car or uh, in the air struts itself. Yep. Okay, so that's good. So we have set it into build mode, so it won't lower, um, uh, and then we can de deflate the reservoir. So deflating in progress. Then it uh, all the air is going out of the reservoir, and it should be safe to start uh, uh, dismantling the reservoir and uh, and working on the air system.
so operation successful we are done so now just turn off the car and it's going to be ready for uh, removing the uh, the air reservoir but remember to put underneath the axle stands so that's next if you don't have the id tool you can raise the car to offer mode pull the fuse 26 and then when you undo the VAS connection on the air tank, do it slowly and wait for the air to vent out. So putting axle stands underneath in case there's some malfunction with the air suspension or anything else while we're working on it, uh, just to be safe. Um, and I'm also going to jack it up a bit just to get some better just to get some better room to, to, to work on it uh, and now while jacking and it's, and it, it's in build mode um, it's not going to move on the other corners like leveling out you can so like you can experience when you're changing tires or something else like that so yeah build mode really nice So as you can see the discovery is really crooked it's only on axis down on the one side and lifted a bit and in build mode it's not moving so uh, it's great so just to be 100 percent sure it's not gonna drop i'm gonna put the small axle stands on this side just so i know if there's something going wrong it's not gonna drop on me the next step is just to use some uh, quick rust remover and then add some oils so I basically use two types. I have a quick rust remover that's like gets super cold, like 40 degrees Celsius minus. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is good for just cleaning off and getting off the worst part of the rust. And then I just use a regular universal spray, rust remover spray, which is more oily. So it gets into the, into the threads yeah, more and it works over time. This is getting a bit dry, so this first and then this. So the two bolts in the front, one there and one there. So they don't look too bad. Hopefully. So let's do the, the rear. Uh, where is it? Here it is. So this is kind of different. The bolts are at the rear of the tank. So you can see them here and here. And the air, uh, air hose connection is up here. So you can't see it that yet. We're going to remove some rust here. The bolts don't look too bad. I was supposed to leave this for the next day, but I couldn't help myself. So I started loosening the bolts. And the first bolt came loose, but it was really, really slow. So I have opened it and now I'm turning it back. So I usually use this open, close, open, close uh, technique when the bolts are really slow. And then I add some extra oil after moving it around a bit. So, first bolt is loose. Woohoo, that's one! So, uh, let's hope the next one goes as easy. Okay, so that's 
So the second bolt even easier. Woohoo! Second bolt out. So you think it would it would drop down the tank. So you think it would drop down the tank because it's mounted here, but there's a small uh, catch here also on the tank. Let's see if you can get a better view. So in that there's a hole and a small catch. So it's resting on that catch here. So you can undo these bolts and then do the front ones. And you can scooch this off this hatch or nudge. <laughs> uh, and then uh, pull it down a bit. But be careful only to pull it down enough so you can undo the the the, um, the air connections. So what you can do, you can put something underneath here, either a jack or a jack stand or axle stand, which holds the tanks while you undo the air air connection, the vase connection, which is called. So for the front two bolts, it's easier to lay on the ground. So I'm gonna put on some work clothes, uh, just so I don't mess out my regular clothes. Wife's not going to be too happy about that. Yes. So let's get the two front bolts out. This is going easier than I thought. If you shock the bolts with a hammer, there's a slight chance it's going to get loose from the rust. So it can be wise to have on uh, an extension on the wrench. And get some proper access. Let's see. So it's a bit loose, so I'm gonna just pull it back again a bit and then open it again. Then back again. And I'm going to try and do the same for the other one and then put some more oil on it. So it's going to be easier to take them out. Let's see it here. Open. This one was pretty easy. And back. And open again. And back. See if we get some oil on that. In there somewhere. Try and catch the hit the bolts somehow. So you can try and hit the bolts from the top by putting okay, the hose well, through this hole. Work on the underneath. Let's get these bolts out. Let's see. So far it's coming. So I wasn't sure this bolt was going to break off or not. So I wanted to try and loosen the other one first. So that's the third bolt. So there's a bunch of rust and dirt. So I'm not sure about this last bolt, if it's gonna come out or not. Or if it's gonna break off. Seems like it's coming. Oh. Oh, happy day. So I'll show you all the details of my experience when chasing out the tank so you can know what you're getting into. And if you have some comments about the length and the details of this video, Woo! be sure to put it in a comment. 
Yes, four bolts are out. Ah, so happy. Put on the glasses because it's so much dirt coming off. Uh, looks like there's an uh, there's a nudge here as well. In theory, this should be loose. Oh, so much dust and dirt. Yeah, so that's loose that end. Here again. That is also loose. So you want to be, uh, you need to get it up of the, the catch here. Then push it a bit back so it this catch doesn't catch, yeah. Uh, and then take it slowly down uh, in the front here. You need to stop around here, then you can do undo. So we're gonna do that, but I need something to hold the air tank when I get it loose from here uh, because it's it's kind of heavy. So there's so much dust and gravel and a big rock between the tank and the frame. So that's why I'm struggling to get it down because it's jammed against the frame. So in this area, there's been a big rock which has laid between the tank and the frame, which has cleaned off the coating on both the frame and the tank. So that's why it has rusted and why it's leaking. It's rusted through the tank. And we're going to take a close look at both the tank and the frame when we get the tank down. So I removed all the rocks and all the dirt and now it's moving much more freely. So I think that is as far as I'm going to get it in the rear. So it's uh, all the way up in the rear and as far back as I can. So I think I need to do the rest on this side. Just get it to pass this edge. You can see the airlines are, uh, airline is coming over the body mount here and then across and then mounted to the, the tank itself with the wasp connector. With the wasp connector up there. So this is when you have to be careful uh, if you're going to reuse the, the air hose that is, is stuck there. He's going to make the jack ready to take the weight of the the tank and then get the tank down. <coughs> so just feed the, the pipe, just be careful not to hurt, hurt the pipe. So here you can see <laughs> The, the reservoir and the air pipe. I'm gonna be careful with that. that. So now when it's down here, we can undo the, the VOS uh, connection here. And that's uh, 22, I think, and a 12. But we only need a 22 now because it's gonna turn there. Let's get the 22. So, <laughs> be sure that there's no pressure in the in the tank, and then if um, if you're <laughs> unsure, be sure to open carefully. Just open until you uh, you hear some uh, sound of air fizzing out or hissing, fizzing, hissing. But I know I got a hole in my tank, so it wouldn't be any uh, air in there. And also, I did the air air uh, that went out of nah, the reservoir went out. The procedure with the ID tool.
As I mentioned before, if you don't have the ID tool, you can open it slowly and then let the air vent out. But use the 12 millimeter nut instead of the 22 when you're going to vent it out. As soon as you hear some air escaping, stop and wait for it to air out. So we have pretty long thread on uh, on this uh, on this valve connector, so just be patient. So that is how that look. <coughs> so now that that's out, we can remove the tank. And it's just about scooching it forwards and it's, uh, it's out. Let's get it on the bench and see how it looks. And that's how you remove so the you air reservoir on, on the Discovery tree. If you have any questions or comments about this removal, be sure to put it in a comment. Yep. So that's the end of day one. So uh, I was actually just going to uh, prepare for taking the tank out, but ended up trying uh, some of the bolts and gotten them all out. So I took out the tank. I uh, got my new tank ready, uh, but before this is going on, I need to do some rust work on the chassis. Uh, so I need to start up the grinder and it's getting too late to do that because the, the neighbor's kids and my own kids are going to sleep. So yeah, so I'm going to continue tomorrow, start with some rust work on the chassis tomorrow and then put the tank on. Hopefully around lunch tomorrow it's ready and we can start it up and check if it works as it should. See you tomorrow.